Welcome to uh, Fedora release party. Uh, we, we try to do a, a slightly different model this time. Basically, Fedora, Fedora 36 release party. This time is a, is a track in uh, DevConf Mini. Uh, so as, as always, I will have a, a opening talk about what's new in Fedora Workstation, which is the default uh, desktop. Uh, edition of Fedora and probably the one that uh, is most interesting to, to users. So I'm, I'm not going to have any slides as always. I, I will do uh, like a demo basically showing what I'm talking about on the on the screen. And, and after after that we will have uh, uh, probably now less than half an hour uh, for Ask Me Anything and uh, I'll be joined by uh, Franciszek.local uh, and Lukáš from uh, the Fedora QA team, so we can have some discussion about about Fedora and uh, you know the f the plans for the future, etc. Uh, it depends what uh, what would you like to uh, know. So because we are uh, five minutes late, let's let's start with that. So uh, Fedora Workstation uses uh, GNOME desktop uh, environment, so I will mostly be talking about what's new in GNOME 42, which is the version that is in uh, Fedora 36. Uh, uh, the, the interface uh, of the environment is called GNOME Shell. Uh, it has been changed slightly, uh, especially the uh, the menus and uh, the symbolic icons, etc. It's rather a subtle change. Nothing that you, that would uh, uh, that you would recognize at the beginning. But the uh, the menus, etc., are more polished. Uh, they should be more. I and mean, this this screen is not really ideal, but I hope that you can see at least a bit of it. Uh, yeah, the, the resolution of the uh, of the projector is really low. Uh, also, the uh, this panel was was rearranged and remodeled a bit. Uh, uh, basically, the uh, the idea behind the changes is that it, it sh the look of it should be s more uh, aligned with uh, GTK4 and Lipadvita which is uh, what's used for uh, uh, new applications in GNOME, and I'm going to talk about it a bit later. Uh, another thing that you may notice is that uh, another subtle, subtle thing, uh, GNOME shell used to have rounded corners, so that's uh, removed as well. Now we've got the, the, uh, the upper panel or the top panel has uh, like sharp corners, uh, the thing is that the uh, the new GTK4 and Libadvita applications have two rounded corners of windows, so they would have to match this with the panel, and the, the rounding is just too too visible, uh, basically too much, so they decided to uh, uh, cancel it completely. As a side effect, there is also some performance benefit. Uh, apparently, the, uh, the rounded corners uh, took some... Uh, 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 system uh, power. Uh, another thing in GNOME Shell is uh, the visible thing is the uh, the on screen panels as they call it. When, for example, if you change the uh, uh, the volume, etc., uh, that has also been redesigned. There used to be like really uh, large uh, panels. Now it's uh, much more uh, subtle. Uh, let's this on. Uh, so that's that's uh, for the shell. In the shell, there there also have been some uh, some performance improvements, like uh, uh, more like direct. Uh, I think some work on direct rendering for games, etc. On on full screen. Uh, so that the, uh, uh, the work on improving the performance is, is on ongoing there. Another thing in, in GNOME Shell that I would like to highlight is a new tool for uh, uh, taking uh, or paint scanning. So when basically when you uh, press the paint scan button, you get this tool, like sort of like overlay. 
And you can you can switch between you know taking like a snapshot, uh, full screen, uh, like a single window. So you can pick a window here, uh, the one you want to take a picture of. Uh, you can also switch between taking pictures and recording a video. And then once you are ready, you can just press the button and it either takes uh, the snapshot or uh, starts uh, the recording. And you can also choose if you want to have the recording or the snapshot with the, uh, the uh, uh, mouse pointer or not. So that's 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 actually really nice because before it was uh, basically just uh, uh, features hidden under uh, shortcuts like you could use uh, like paint screen that would take like a, a paint screen of the whole screen immediately. Then you could use uh, paint screen shift paint screen which would give you the option to uh, do the uh, like uh, just part of the screen, and then you had uh, like Control Alt Shift R, which was the recording. So it was uh, especially pretty difficult uh, 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 shortcut to remember. So now now it's all under uh, one to one, I think. that originally uh, there were different shortcuts for taking screenshots and saving the picture in the folder and uh, saving it in the, uh, how do you call it? The schranka, the clipboard, yes. And uh, now if you hit uh, take screenshot, so it will save the screenshot in the picture folder and uh, it will also save it in clipboard so you can use it immediately. I think the, o the only missing feature or uh, commonly uh, used feature is uh, the delay. Uh, so for that there is still that utility. So if you if you type, uh, I mean I, I've got check localization but in English it's like uh, screenshot or something like that, that this this application that it still has the the feature uh with uh with delay uh so that's uh there's the screenshotting uh feature so i at the beginning i mentioned I think uh, if you do the, the because I I always I'm still I still have a muscle memory shift paint screen for you know just a sol uh, selective uh, paint screen I think that does the 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 screen of the whole uh, display let me let me try oh that's strange. Maybe not, but I think I, it worked. But the, I think you can, uh, if you if you go to shortcuts, you can ma you can map it to just the sim. I I haven't tried it myself, I, uh, so I, I don't know. Apparently, by default, uh, the shortcuts don't work anymore. Uh, it's definitely something worth uh, exploring. Uh, okay, so uh, another thing that I mentioned in the beginning is GTK. Uh, Four and Libadwaita. So GTK4 is the new generation of, uh, yeah, uh, uh, basically it used to be uh, the GNOME toolkit uh, with GTK4. They are trying to target it as a, or position it as a more uh, generic uh, graphics toolkit. Uh, and uh, if you want to have uh, like the, the complete user experience and feeling of GNOME, then you also use Libadvaita uh, on the top of that. And the Libadvaita gives you the look and feel and everything of uh, GNOME applications. So GTK4 is more like uh, you know developing uh, a generic uh, desktop application. And if you want to have uh, like a GNOME application, then you use Libadvaita. So uh, one of the m major changes in uh, Libadvaita is it, it basically doesn't, no longer supports uh, uh, custom themes. 
Uh, so basically, the theme, the default theme, is is sort of uh, hard coded. The reason behind that is that uh, the custom themes uh, break applications. So the, the developer of the application doesn't have any control over, you know, the the, fi the final look of uh, his application. So he can, for example, develop it with the, the Advaita theme in mind, and then someone applies a completely different theme, and the application uh, breaks because, for example, there is a dark uh, or a black uh, font on a uh, dark uh, background. Uh, so. Uh, with Libadvita, they are trying to avoid that. There is still uh, some uh, customization. Uh, the distributions can apply, so you can have, for example, different uh, color schemes. So, for example, Ubuntu is uh, most like mostly orange or or uh, purple. So they instead of instead of, for example, blue, they use uh, purple. Or I think they, they even allow you to switch between uh, different uh, themes, but there is uh, there is not uh, much uh, uh, beyond beyond that. Uh, uh, on the other hand, what it finally supports is uh, a proper uh, system uh, dark mode. Uh, so now. If you go to uh, preference or settings, you can switch to between uh, light and dark mode. And basically, uh, yeah. Wonder why uh, Firefox is not switching to that? It should. Uh, yeah, I've got some. I did some uh, tweaking to that, so maybe it doesn't work that uh, well f for me anyway. Uh, but the the GNOME applications should switch to dark mode. But it works uh, slightly different. I mean, you may say, I mean, this is this is no news because uh, Advaita Dark is has been here for uh, a long time, uh, so I can just change the uh, uh, the theme to Adva Advaita Dark, and then uh, I I have like a dark mode as well. Uh, this the, this is a slightly different approach. So instead of basically enforcing some uh, theme for all applications. Which is uh, these days not even possible with Libadvita. They basically just uh, have an API that lets uh, other applications know that uh, the user uh, prefers dark mode, and the application itself decides. Okay, we I actually support uh, dark mode, so I I will switch to it, or I don't support it. I only s support uh, light uh, mode or one uh, specific theme. So I, I will just ignore it. I mean, this this way it basically uh, avoids the problems I, I described before. That uh, you know, for example, applying the dark mode would basically uh, ruin or broke the uh, uh, would break the application interface. So it's it's on the developer and the application to decide if they they want to adhere to this setting or, or not. Uh, and it's actually not uh, an invention of GNOME. It was originally developed by elementary OS uh, people, and uh, GNOME just they used that. And I think K KD joined the uh, the crowd as well. So it's I think it's becoming a de facto Linux standard. Uh, this API for uh, switching between light and and, and dark mode. Uh, as I mentioned in. Uh, uh, GTK uh, 4 and Libadvita has a slightly different theming than uh, GTK 3. And in uh, uh, Fedora 36, definitely not all applications are ported to GTK 4 and, and Libadvita. Even, for example, the, the default uh, file browser and Autilus is still a GTK 3. And, and you could notice that the, the theming is not too different, but it's 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 still different. So the consistency, as uh, we are used to from GNOME, is is not really on that level at the moment. Until uh, most, uh, like all applications, are ported to GTK4. Uh, on the other hand, there is a way around it. Like the designers decided, they 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 don't want to backport the the GTK uh, uh, Lib Advaita theme to GTK3. Uh, because there would be, uh, it would not be 100% uh, uh, 
uh, good or uh, successful, so they they, they decided to keep the old uh, GTK Fay Advaita uh, there, and then they inter then introduced uh, a new theme for GTK4 and, and Lib Advaita. On the other hand, there is, there is a Linux community, and there is uh, one guy who started working on. Uh, we actually wrote an article on moefedora.cz about it. Uh, so uh, the name of the uh, the theme is uh, uh, basically Advaita GTK3. Uh, you can download it, you can install it, and then you can switch to it. Uh, there is you can do it, uh, for example. So this yeah. this is switching. So this this switches to. Uh, all GTK3 applications to uh, a theme that is really similar or almost identical to uh, GTK41. So then you can get uh, the same consistency with some minor glitches, but it's it's uh, uh, not really noticeable. And then you basically get the, the same level of consistency like before. All GNOME applications look alike. And then okay, you can always switch switch back. Uh, so that's that's the theming. Uh, another thing when I'm already in settings is uh, change in uh, screen sharing. Uh, screen sharing. Let me open it. Uh, when I allow screen sharing. Uh, So basically, uh, until uh, this release, GNOME was using uh, VNC protocol for screen sharing. Uh, with this release, it switched to RDP. RDP is uh, definitely more advanced protocol than uh, VNC. It has better performance, more, more features, etc. So it, it has a completely new in interface. Uh, it, uh, it's slightly for example, the address, etc., is slight, slightly different, so it ad adheres to the RDP uh, protocol. Sadly, uh, it doesn't work that reliably at the moment. Uh, I think there is still a lot, uh, quite a lot of work to uh, to do there. So the VNC one that was before was uh, more reliable. RDP one will hopefully be in the future with all the, the advanced features there as well. Uh, okay, uh, the changes from uh, in apps. So uh, Fedora 36 uh, workstation changed the, the default uh, uh, text editor. So it used to uh, uh, have uh, gedit, uh, but GNOME and then because uh, Fedora usually follows the the decisions in upstreams. Uh, uh, the GNOME decided to uh, adopt a GNOME text editor, like a very simple name instead of gedit. The main reason behind it is that the gedit developers were not really interested in porting uh, gedit to GTK4 and Libadvita, so there was a bit of a uh, uh, difference in opinions. Uh, so other de developers in uh, in GNOME developed uh, a new text editor. He basically, it uses uh, GTK uh, source view and all the uh, the libraries behind it, like gedit. It just it's written in in GTK4 and in Libadvita, and it has all the new uh, features. Like it can you can also change the themes here. It also it should also follow the, the preference of theme in. Uh, uh, as as I mentioned here, uh, or you can you can overrule that by uh, some application uh, color scheme here. It looks pretty nice. It uh, it's it's faster than gedit because it uses OpenGL for rendering. It has autosave, etc. And it's not extremely advised uh, advanced text editor uh, definitely if, if you are used to something like vim it, it probably won't satisfy you on the other hand it's just a default text editor so if you just want to edit some text uh, and it opens uh, from now till in this then it's 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 fine 
Another uh, application that was introduced with uh, GNOME uh, 42 was uh, GNOME console that should uh, replace uh, GNOME terminal in the future. Uh, basically, the, the problem there is the same. Uh, like GNOME terminal developers are not really keen in you know, for, uh, switching to GTK4, etc. So uh, other developers introduced GNOME console that should be the default uh, 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 terminal in the future. And again, um, uh, both applications will live under GNOME umbrella. Uh, I guess the GNOME terminal will be for more advanced users. GNOME console will be uh, more uh, simpler to use and probably more uh, like better looking, etc. Uh, so we can uh, the, the users can uh, can decide what to use. Currently, Fedora 36 is still using GNOME terminal because we don't uh, we don't feel that the or we don't think the GNOME t console is there yet, but eventually uh, Fedora Workstation may switch to it as well. Uh, then uh, the default video uh, player, Totem, uh, ha also had some changes. It no longer uh, uh, depends on uh, clutter, and it uses uh, OpenGL widgets, so uh, the cupcakes are here. So I will finish uh, soon, and then we can have a short break for cupcakes. Uh, okay, so uh, Totem, yeah, now it, us it uses OpenGL uh, widgets, and I must say uh, the uh, it's it's much faster uh, the video playback. Like uh, before, uh, on uh, less powerful com uh, computers, uh, Totem always felt uh, slower. Uh, then, uh, for example, VLC or M player, etc. Now it seems to be on the same uh, level, so uh, uh, definitely an improvement. Then, in evolution, uh, the it's not the default uh, email client, but it's still under uh, GNOME umbrella. You can find it in Fedora repositories. A nice feature is that you can now use Markdown for uh, writing emails. So if you if you are familiar with Markdown or it's uh, uh, the language you you like for formatting, then uh, there is definitely this nice feature. And in in boxes the. Uh, uh, the the virtual desktop virtualization uh, this this dialog this whole all this uh, were completely redesigned and rewritten as if to follow the uh, GNOME user interface guidelines uh, so that's for the applications and just a uh, last couple of things. Uh, Fedora 36 workstation also uses Stacker 3.3. Uh, Stacker is basically uh, an indexer, so it indexes and, and creates a database of meta uh, metadata about files and documents you have on, on your disk. Uh, with uh, uh, the third generation of Stacker, there were uh, like completely cha uh, uh, changed architecture so that it's much more uh, privacy oriented, for example, like applications now cannot see all the all the uh, tracker indexes, but only the ones that uh, they have created or they have access to. On the other hand, it was at the expense of the performance. So since uh, the switch, the developers have been working on improving the the performance. Uh, Especially with this release, it improved a lot. Uh, the, fast, the, the indexing is faster, memory consumption is down by 50%, and the startup of indexers is uh, 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 two thirds slower than it was before. So it, the, the whole indexing should be, uh, basically it's a thing that you shouldn't uh, even be bothered by, it just runs on the background and uh, as, uh, they should th it should take as uh, least resources as possible. Another thing, uh, 
another change is uh, there is much faster uh, input devices. So that's another thing that they've been trying to improve uh, in uh, GNOME shell and this, uh, GNOME in general for a long time. Uh, so uh, one of the, the things they changed in this release is that the, 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 in the input uh, events are now much less uh, uh, processed by the high-level JavaScript code in uh, GNOME shell and is uh, left on the, uh, the low-level parts, which are usually in C and, and much faster. And another, another thing they changed is that uh, the input devices now can set their own uh, frequency. So if, for example, some uh, gaming mouse uses uh, 1,000 uh, hertz frequency, and then uh, it's basically now possible in GNOME as well. So especially for gamers, now the input devices should be much snappier and faster. I think they, uh, when they did some benchmarking, they, uh, they got the, uh, the latency of input devices as low as to two milliseconds. And that's basically it for me. So it's uh, about time. So wonder if you have any questions to this talk or we can switch to the panel discussion already or to cupcake eating. <laughs> so any, any questions, Luis? Yeah, I have questions about uh, switching through light uh, to dark. Term. Uh, does it have some uh, schedule for example, uh, to switch in the evening to the dark uh, therm and to switch to the... Not, not yet, it doesn't have at the, at the moment in this version, but it's si something that is being discussed. It's a pretty frequent uh, request because I think in, uh, at least in macOS, they, it has some scheduling. So I, I guess it, they, will, they will eventually introduce it. It's the same because for example, for Nightlight, uh, it actually has a scheduler. So if they have it for nightlight, I suppose that at some point they will introduce it for uh, uh, for theme switching as well. You wanna follow with some, uh, with a panel discussion, basically ask us anything about Fedora or can just uh, discuss uh, different topics about Fedora, like open floor. Uh, so basically it's, it, it, it's me, I, I work for uh, the desktop team in Red Hat and I've been a long time Fedora contribu contributor basically for over a decade. Uh, I'm, I'm, Francisco. I'm Francisco Local and I'm working as Fedora quality engineer uh, for a few years and I've been Fedora contributor for a few more before that. And my name is Lukasz Ružička and I work with Franta at Fedora QE. Basically, uh, I do release validation and uh, open QA testing. So any, any questions, any topics? We've got a really cool microphone to throw at you. Okay. <laughs> Does it work? Yes. Yes. So, uh, I would like to ask uh, whether there is uh, something like GNOME vision, like in which direction we sh uh, can and should expect the GNOME desktop to develop. And maybe uh, if it's possible to put the uh, changes that you are presenting in, uh, in the past half an hour uh, in the context of such vision. That's a, that's a tough question. I mean, there are definitely, s I don't think there is some, some official vision, like a, like a document, okay, we are gonna do this in next five, 10 years. On the other hand, the community is definitely trying to uh, work on something like that. I know that, for example, Alan Day, the, the basically the main GNOME designer, he, if you follow his blog, I think it is like a year or two he basically published a set of, set of articles about what they want to achieve with, with GNOME in the, in the future. And a lot of those 
uh, changes that uh, uh, basically landed in the last release where they're like mentioned. There is, of course, one one thing is the is the vision. The other thing is the the, the, the reality. The designers they have lots of ideas, but the uh, the developer resources are always limited. So I, I know that a lot of a lot of features that they have for uh, for GNOME Shell etc. that that have been postponed and postponed for uh, for years because uh, there is. Uh, there are no uh, developers to work on that, or not enough. And uh, basically, the uh, I think the approach uh, of uh, GNOME generally is that uh, instead of doing more with less quality, it's better to do less uh, with with some some quality. So. Uh, that could, for example, be uh, like a dis, uh, uh, distinguishing thing from KDE, where they are more into advanced features, uh, that the, at the cost that the uh, you know the code base is, is huge and it's really hard to maintain it, and it's not always uh, with the best quality. But the the, adv uh, the advanced uh, users are fine with that. So uh, GNOME is rather follow. Uh, one of, I mean, GNOME is uh, often criticized for, you know, like removing features or not having enough features. But it's not like the, the community wouldn't like to have more features. But it's really the mindset is uh, we just want to do uh, uh, just what we can do in uh, a certain quality. If we can't do it in that quality, then we don't do it. So if GNOME would have twice as many developers, then they would introduce like definitely more features. And for the vision, uh, <coughs> there is also there are also some directions set by the GNOME uh, Foundation. So for example, one of the visions they na now have is sort of like a cloudless computing. So they want to, because these days, like all the data, user data are in, in the cloud. And if you want to have, for example, like synchronization between computers, it's usually like you have to use some, some service like uh, Google, etc. Uh, and uh, one of the fresh visions of uh, GNOME is that they would like to give you, uh, users some way to actually achieve the, the same features but without relying on like cloud uh, uh, providers. So uh, I, I'm still uh, wondering how they want, I mean, it's, it's mostly like uh, some peer-to-peer -peer syncing, etc. but they want to uh, really do it. Your, your data should stay in your computer uh, and, for example, sync to your another machine, etc. do a backup to a device you or uh, disk you choose. But not to like 100% uh, uh, rely with these features on on cloud providers. So that's one of the fresh visions GNOME has. But it's it's still not uh, really reflected in the in the the feature set currently because it was introduced just some time ago. But if you wanna if you wanna know about the, the visions, then Alan Day is the, his blog is definitely f worth following. Uh, then. Uh, a GNOME wiki page uh, with uh, 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 the section for the design team, all, all the ideas are there waiting for implementation. So you want to see what the, the designers are thinking about and what could potentially be in, uh, implemented in the future is there as well. Uh, and then uh, then probably following the, the GNOME Foundation, uh, they also have some like official uh, analysis of, uh, of this. Those are like, I would say, three sources for, for the vision. So I probably don't have any comments. No. Okay, so. Okay, any other question? So, Fedora related for change. Thanks. Uh, I'm interested about uh, the different desktop environments, uh, specifically uh, Cinnamon. Uh, do you have any updates here? Uh, anything interesting going on here? Uh, I per personally don't. The, I mean, the thing is that, uh, like, Red Hat itself, and for example, desktop team in Red Hat is really 
uh, involved in uh, the GNOME because we we work on GNOME and then uh, we've, we've got in our head we have one person working on, on Qt and KDE and that's basically it. So all our expertise in, is invested in GNOME because that's what we also use in our Red Enterprise Linux, etc. And all the, ad, all the other desktop environments are basically uh, uh, community based. So uh, it, there, is, there is a SIG, which is a special interest group for uh, related to Cinnamon or all the other uh, desktop environments. And that's basically on them what plans they have. We de I mean, the Red Hat has no say, uh, no control over that. So they, they get to decide, you know, what version of the environment would they want to switch to, what uh, default theme, default applications uh, they want to use. And also they are in charge of the quality. So we as Red Hat, uh, because uh, uh, Federal QA and, and guys like uh, Francis and Lukash, well, as a Red Hat we can uh, sort of... Uh, have some control or assurances about the quality of the default editions, like workstation, server, what's the third one, IoT, right? Yeah, yeah. Cloud. and cloud. So that's where, where Red Hat and, and Red Hat supported teams are doing the testing, and uh, the quality of all the other uh, desktop environments that's uh, relies solely on the, uh, the community uh, people. I'll just add from QE perspective, uh, we aren't doing any validation testing. Uh, we have pretty large test matrices that uh, need that all need to pass uh, for Fedora to be released. And uh, we don't care as far as I know about other desktops. If somebody reports a bug, uh, we can ping developers or, uh, but we, we won't delay release because of uh, second, second class desktops. Um, I will talk about this uh, in my talk uh, in, in an hour, I suppose. Uh, how we do validation testing and uh, Cinnamon, for example, is uh, currently not part of that validation testing because uh, we don't have resources to do so, but uh, it's community driven and uh, if somebody, we have mechanisms how the community could drop in and help us test it, for example. So uh, if you would be interested in testing Cinnamon, it's not a problem and we have the tools and we have the mechanisms, so yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's also an opportunity for, for, for people from the community because you can actually be in charge of that uh, edition or, or version of Fedora. So it's, it's if, if there is someone interested in Cinnamon, can go contribute to that. And uh, as, as always in open source uh, meritocracy, you know, the people who are doing the work are the ones that, that, that decide about it. And it works 100% uh, in, this, in this case. So I can't really say much about the, the other desktop environments because uh, we have no control or no insight in their planning, it's really up to those uh, sub-communities in, in Fedora. Uh, I would like uh, to ask uh, Franta uh, about uh, like uh, Bugzilla's and how does it look like from the bird's perspective, yeah? Whether uh, you, it's managed to fix a majority of them or uh, if, if you have an idea, yeah? Uh, can you repeat the second part of the question? Uh, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, uh, how are the numbers? Uh, if, uh, uh, like, more of, their, more of them are coming, and what is the ratio of, uh, like, successful resolution? If you have just, you know, general uh, feeling. I know that you are not prepared for this, uh, and it's probably I, I, difficult. I don't have exact numbers in, in my head, uh, but uh, uh, I don't know about all the components, but, for example, well, many parts of GNOME. Uh, the developers or maintainers don't pay attention to bugzillas and they care about issues reported on GitLab, which is uh, also a problem for our processes because, uh, for example, if we have some, uh, we have decided something is blocking issue in Fedora, we need to create two entries, one, one in GitLab, so GNOME developers notice, and one in bugzilla, so we can process it through our mechanisms. 
Uh, but I don't have any trends or numbers uh, in, my, in my head. Uh, sorry to steal the, to steal the question, but um, uh, from my point of view, I sometimes feel that uh, that uh, lots of those uh, bugzillas uh, remain unanswered if uh, or unless uh, it's a big problem that might uh, slow down Fedora releases. Uh, in that case, uh, it's pretty much fixed very soon. But if it's like a minor issue, then uh, uh, the responsiveness is not so high. And uh, there are bugs between releases, for example, that get re reported for one release, say 34, and uh, then they get moved to 35 and 36, and they still are not answered. We have quite a number of, of those two. Yeah, put some perspective from uh, a team that works on it upstream. And yeah, that's, that's basically true, uh, at least in, in our case, mostly. Well, one of the reasons is basically uh, we have, for example, one, in fact, one maintainer for most GNOME packages in, in, in Fedora. So basically, we, we have quite a few people working on those components upstream, and they do care uh, about Fedora. But they, they are not really directly involved in the you know, downstream uh, processes. So usually it, it works the way that uh, we fix bugs and implement features upstream. And then the actual packaging is, is done in and masse by, uh, by a single person on the team. And that person uh, is supposed to be the, the interface between uh, Fedora and the rest of the team. On the other hand, it's uh, simply not possible uh, for, for a single person. So that's, that, that's why uh, people usually uh, prefer having those conversations in the upstream Bugzilla, because, I mean, it's from the, the perspective of the, the, the upstream developer, it's also a du duplication of, of places like, you have to look for bugs there and there, and those people usually work on RHEL as well, so they also have to look into Bugzilla for uh, several RHEL releases. And believe me, the, uh, the developers are definitely overwhelmed by the number of Bugzillas. Uh, some of them even work on several upstream projects, so it's like GitHub, GitLab, uh, Bugzilla. So, uh, I mean, uh, ideally, and I, I, I feel the pain of uh, the users that, for example, uh, report a bug in Bugzilla and there, did they, it, it's not answered. On the other hand, like yeah, I also see it from uh, the point of the, the upstream developer. So. I have one more remark. Uh, also, the, the upstream projects that are not specifically, specifically related to Fedora, and they have those issues on GitLab or GitHub, for example. So th they work maybe better in fixing those bugs or responding to them uh, because they are also visited by people from other distros. So uh, if the distros uh, share something like uh, Pipewire, for example, is now part of different distributions. So uh, those uh, bug trackers get visited much, much more often and by much more, bu much more people than uh, the Red Hat Bugzilla. So it's also really useful to do it upstream, perhaps, if you have uh, a bug that you need to fix, then uh, do it in Red Hat Bugzilla, because that would be just Fedora related. Yeah. Over time, just, just uh, last remark. Uh, another aspect that uh, plays a role here is also that for example, uh, GitLab or GitLab are much uh, more pleasant to use than, than Bugzilla. That's simply, I mean, when, when, when GNOME switched from Bugzilla to GitLab, the, the number of uh, interactions uh, between developers and users and even like number of contributors just increased. 
because it's 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 more. I mean, Bugzilla. I know that there are people who are used to it and they uh, they like it. On the other hand, like uh, most people, just don't because it's uh, it's interface from from 90s and people are uh, used to these days to different uh, features, etc. In GitLab, you can like upload screenshots directly in the comments, and it's just uh, much more pleasant. And it's uh, that's another reason why, for example. Uh, developers uh, tend to stick to upstream uh, GitLab, for example, or GitHub instead of, you know, having those conversations with people in in Bugzilla. So I hope that in the in the in the future, uh, Fedora will also make the decision and switch to something that is uh, newer than than Bugzilla. Uh, just one last small remark. Uh, <coughs> one of the reasons why some developers don't pay that much of an attention to Bugzilla might be ABRT, which is useful tool, but for some components it generates a huge number of bug reports that aren't reproducible and uh, people just get overwhelmed by hundreds of emails a day. <laughs> okay. I generally don't switch ABRT on. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's not so useful for uh, bug reporting. It's... Uh, useful for bug prioritization and we definitely use it on the desktop team we we look through the statistics and we we see there is a crasher that has a uh, hundred thousand occurrences then we know that we should uh, focus on that and if there is a single user who reports that uh, backtrace etc then it helps us to solve a problem that actually impacts like uh, thousands of users because otherwise uh, there are too many bugs uh, to solve and this is like really, really nice guidance, you know, to what uh, bugs uh, to pay attention. Okay, so thanks for your, uh, for an oh. Okay, it, 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 yeah, it, it does. Is there some popularity uh, of uh, installed packages, uh, sort of, uh, uh, available in the Fedora, like Debian popularity contest or something similar. We Do we know what uh, packages are popular, what are used often, what are used almost never, or something we like? We don't. We don't have. We don't have that uh, so far. Fedora has been trying to collect as little information about uh, user installations as possible. I know there are uh, some talks that if it's, if it's approved by, by the user that we would collect some metadata about the, the installations. Like for example, what, uh, it's already, we already have a count in uh, that basically, so uh, it helps us uh, uh, count how many installations of which version of Fedora are there. Uh, and there are some talks about to extend it to, for example, uh, a list of packages the users are having. Uh, so that's, that's, that would be incredibly useful for us because otherwise it's really difficult to see you know, what's popular among people and what's not. Because all the polls, etc., it's just, it doesn't really give you the, the picture of the reality because uh, only, peop only a small portion of people usually not the, uh, the correct sample of the whole user base uh, participate. On the other hand, it's also a sensitive uh, thing because people t usually don't like, you know, uh, in information being collected from their system and, and uploaded somewhere, even though it's anonymized, etc. cetera. And, uh, so, I don't know, currently we don't, we don't track it. Uh, and there is no concrete plan to do it. There is some discussion, so it may uh, happen in the future, but uh, nothing, nothing concrete. Just, uh, <coughs> it's not exact way, but uh, you can kind of guess package popularity from uh, reports on the trace server. If something has uh, many different issues, it's probably used by more people than something that doesn't have any issues recorded. Yeah, but that is m mattering of how much it is broken often. Yeah, but not how th 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 there could be some good. correlation. <laughs> 
what is it uh, you actually need? Uh, I understood from uh, what you said that there are a lot of bugzillas that uh, aren't responded to, and uh, I, I got a feeling that you uh, somehow uh, assume the upstream developers would uh, take a look at them. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, on the other hand, you can, for example, just uh, try to reproduce them and uh, defer to upstream and just uh, close the Bugzilla tracker and move uh, even the people to watch the upstream issues and then uh, and help both the users and, and, and the number of Bugzillas in that way. Uh, yeah, th this is something that uh, community members could could do, like uh, watch their favorite projects uh, and their bugzillas and 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 re report those issues if if you could reproduce them to to upstream uh, because we, we don't have m many hours for for that uh, we just just care about the uh, worst issues and projects we test and support like officially that should be the uh, the duty of the the maintainer of the package that should be the middleman between the upstream developer and the user so uh, if like for example for my packages if i s if i see a problem reported i know it's most likely uh, upstream back i just go and, and and report it upstream with all the uh, the necessary uh, uh, data but uh, uh, yeah the thing is many people are not uh, like the, the maintainers are not doing it i mean it's it's the uh, uh, the reality uh, i know people who have uh, dozens, even our community people, like that, for example, they have one hour for Fedora every day and they have dozens or hundreds of packages. So uh, it's, it's, it's not happening. It's I, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not happening generally, but it's really f package from package. For there are maintainers who are dutiful and who do it, they respond to users, report bugs. But it there also, I mean, Federal has 30,000 packages or something like that, so. Okay, uh, it is also possible to uh, set a custom text as a default text that is uh, visible in a Bugzilla when you create a new issue. I, I did it for my packages, I know it is possible. Uh, so uh, you uh, should uh, place uh, the links to the upstream bug trackers to the Bugzilla and somehow tell the people that they are much more likely uh, their issues to be uh, taken a look at if they uh, go directly to upstream. Uh, are you sure it's possible with Red Hat Bugzilla? Uh, it might be possible with upstream Bugzilla, but uh, Red Hat Bugzilla, which, is, uh, which works for Fedora Bux, is, uh, is a bit different and uh, there is some complicated setup that nobody understands properly. Uh, I can ask. Uh, somebody from infrastructure team about that, but uh, I barely think I've heard somebody saying that it's not possible for our case. It m it might be supported by upstream Bugzilla, but uh, I'm not sure if it's possible in. Our yeah, I, I'm I'm talking about the Bugzilla Red Hat com. Mm -hmm. uh, I set up uh, uh, I did a setup uh, of that for the MariaDB and MySQL packages. Uh, mm -hmm. And in the default message, I ask users like, uh, for example, give me uh, uh, a result of that command to show mm -hmm. me what packages you, you have installed. So I have uh, uh, much better results uh, because I know what I uh, need to see uh, from the user. Oh, okay, so uh, I was completely wrong, <laughs> wrong here maybe. Uh, th this is something that uh, uh, could be communicated somehow to package maintainers if, if they w want, want uh, better guide users towards better bug reports. So you mean like automated reply to? Is that one? I wonder if there could be one for for all packages, uh, but it's you wouldn't probably cut it. It's probably still on the maintainers if they wanna do it or not. But there could be some guidance about it. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, in, in general, I think it's uh, better to tell the users the truth, uh, what is the status, so what manpower uh, we have, what they can expect, uh, expect and uh, uh, leave the bugs uh, ans answered for even decades sometimes. Uh, well, I also think that uh, 
the package maintainers and developers or upstream developers are one group of people, it's one part. And uh, also there is another part and it's uh, the users uh, who do not report bugs as frequently as we might want because uh, sometimes uh, we find bugs late in the process and uh, they probably, they were found before somebody probably uh, uh, arrived into them, but they are not reported. So uh, I think it would also help if uh, Fedora users would just report bugs for applications they like and they use daily and if it doesn't work so they would report the bug anywhere it if it's in bugzilla if it's uh, upstream it will be eventually found and forwarded but if it's not there then we don't know about it uh it is generally a uh, really hard to debug a desktop application for a user who don't know anything about that uh do you have uh, for example some set of uh uh, good ideas uh, how to create uh, minimal reproducers or something like that for uh, desktop applications or uh, a set of uh, information that you would uh, like to know most what is important to, for you to, need to know to be able to debug that or at least reproduce we, we have something on our Fedora wiki on our QA page pages but uh, those weren't touched for a long time as far as I know I don't know what's there. <laughs> and this is also something that uh, interests me personally, but uh, uh, it's, of course, it's a time problem, but uh, I am a supporter of report anything. If you find a problem, just tell us there is a problem, and then someone else could debug it. Uh, and maybe, uh, I, I know there is the ABRT, tool uh, in Fedora, uh, maybe uh, it would be nice if there was a bug reporting tool that would easily uh, enable users just to report a bug somewhere. Uh, it could perhaps collect something from some information from the system automatically and uh, send it so that we know about it. This is quite a good idea. Uh, or maybe uh, pick up the pick up the or collect the information that are on the wiki page because the the wiki page of Fedora QA is, is quite overwhelmed with various info and th there was a landing page is it still uh, we were working on something called a landing page and I think that this is a good candidate to be placed on the landing page. So what's the status? Uh, it's pending deployment currently. It's been put on hold because of lack of resources, uh, mainly, mainly uh, my resources because I'm handling uh, infrastructure stuff for our, t our QA team. Uh, it's it's being, being worked on and uh, we can ask our, our colleague Lukash uh, about that idea. Back uh, at one, one note. It's also a lot about uh, timing. You want to really help with quality of Fedora and with bug reporting. The most relevant time is really, I think, bit somewhere around alpha, between alpha and beta. And it's also the time when usually, at least, at least uh, we in Red Hat are actually looking for uh, users' feedback. Once, uh, once it's uh, the Fedora is out. And there is a bug. Uh, you can bet. You can bet all your money on the fact that it's gonna be reported, and the developer will know about it because then it will be, uh, uh, you know, thousands of users impacted by that. But if if you really want to make a difference, uh, then please uh, look at the new release between alpha and beta, and that's really the best uh, the best time. And usually that's when you also get the. Uh, 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 the time from the developer because 
and it helps us as well a lot because that's actually a problem for uh, because the federal QA team they do the verification but for example for desktop applications very very close to the final release and then uh, until then n no one really uh, tests that from the community and then suddenly we get tons of uh, uh, there is blocking bugs that have to be resolved in a week or two and there is like really a little time so we would really appreciate if you know uh, some community feedback earlier on for example around, around alpha and that's also when uh, there is the highest chance to you know to get those bugs resolved really quickly uh, i totally agree with that and i would uh, say or add that uh, uh there is no need to be running rawhide because this is something what people usually don't want to do on their production machines uh but uh it's i would say it's quite okay if you switch to the next release when it's branched so th there is a date where uh, from Rawhide, uh, Fedora 30 something gets released uh, or gets branched, not released, branched. And uh, if you wait a couple of days before the repositories settle down and then you switch to it, uh, it will mostly work uh, and uh, you will be able to find all the bugs there and uh, report them on time. And this really helps. Uh, I am doing it, but I am QA, but I am doing it and it works. Th this this process works. And I don't end up with a broken computer, mostly. Uh, just I if you switch to branch the release uh, right after branching, pay, pay attention to blocker bugs and common bugs after the release because sometimes there are occurrences that uh, something broken gets pushed to branched and it gets fixed by a next update, but not for people who already installed the broken package. Uh, we had two such occurrences that people running on a branch had to manually intervene to to have final behavior. Thanks for your attention and that you came here. And yeah, let's let's have a break before the next talk. Yeah.